Hello, everybody. Welcome to Why Wednesday, where we share words of wisdom. Today, we're going to be talking about hope for the best. Don't anticipate the worst. Hope for the best. Don't anticipate the worst. We know that we are in a pandemic. We are at a place that we've never been. And so our our minds get a little cloudy, especially when we turn on the news, we look at our social media outlets, and we tend to make a judgment call or, a, a, you know, we tend to think uh, from the information that we've gathered that this is a worst case scenario and that it's a hopeless, helpless situation. There is some uncertainty. There is some unknown factors. We've never been here before, so we can't, you know, really make a decision or, or determine whether it will go this way or that way. And so that leaves us at a place of those of us that um, are not grounded in the word and not grounded in Christ at a place of hopelessness and despair, you know, and we will look at the worst of the situation and we will gravitate towards that. We will take it as this is my reality and I fear going to the store. I fear going to school. I fear going to my job. I fear everywhere that I go. If, even if I walk outside my doors, I'm living in this panic fear mode. You know, I'm gripping my children because I don't want them to, you know, to be sick. I don't want them to die. I don't want, you know, I don't want to die. And so you're, you're living in this 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 moment or in this bubble of you know I got to shield myself I got to protect myself from this that or the other when you you don't want to walk in fear you don't want to walk in a place where you feel like you're hopeless and helpless and defenseless you know we are going to hope for the best and not anticipate the worst because guess what? We are sons and daughters of God. So then we know that there is good coming out of every situation. We cannot look at it in a negative light. Because just as God allowed it, God can lift it. That's my son. Just as God allowed it, he can lift it. He can end this thing. Matter of fact, he's in the driver's seat. He's steering the wheel. He can stop it at any time. He's just trying to get his people positioned so that he can do what he wants to do or do what he desires to do, which is, and I really believe, to end it all. End this whole fiasco. But well, we have to hope for the best and not anticipate the worst. Because anyone can convince, convince you of the lie. Anyone can convince you of something that is right in front of you. They can paint the picture. They can make it look how they want it to look. They can change the numbers. They can project. You know, we've talked about this already. We talked about how they can adjust numbers and adjust things and make it look however they want it to look. Because what better way to control the minds and hearts of people than to invoke fear? That's a form of control. That's a form of relying on the government, relying on news, relying on what people say, relying on uh, st statistics and facts that is, is misconstrued, that's faulty. Relying on testing information that's faulty and misconstrued and taking your focus off of God that was never God's intention for us to do that but it's happening people it's happening people are trusting more in the news the fake news than they are trusting in God people are trusting more in the numbers 
the rising surging numbers then they are trusting in their God come on somebody we got to get focused right now our minds have been gravitating to this stuff and we need to pull away from it because what it's doing is causing more fear is invoking more pessimism is invoking um, more despair and hopelessness panic stress all of these different things that happen in our life because we're listening to the wrong voice we're tuning in to the wrong voice and we need to be tuning in to God's voice. Where is God's voice in this hour? Are we hearing God's voice in this hour? And if you're plugged in and tuned in, what is he saying to you? What is he speaking to you in your spirit? What is he saying to you when you're praying? When you're reading his word, God is speaking. He's speaking. Hope for the best. Don't anticipate the worst. We're gonna go into some scriptures, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna hold you long. I had I, hey, I'm not gonna hold you long. I promise. We're gonna go into um, Romans, but before we go into Romans, let me quote this scripture in Psalms 119 and 81. It says, "I hope in your word." Not in my words, not in the president's words, not in the in the news, in the news words, you know, what they're saying. Not in the WHO and the CDC and all of these organizations. Not in the governor's words. I hope in your word, God. In your word. That's what I hope. That's what I hope in. That's what I trust in. That's what I believe in. Your word, God. Your word refutes all other words that are in my life right now. I can't get distracted by words that are in my sphere of influence, in, in my environment. But I got to gravitate to God's word and what he's saying to me. What he's speaking through his holy word. What is he saying? What has he been nudging me about? What, is he, what has he been saying in my spirit man? Concerning the times and seasons. Concerning what's going on right now. What is God saying to me? Speak to my heart Lord. Speak to my heart. Speak to my mind. I need a word from you. Because I hope in your word. I hope in your word, God. We're going to go to Romans, you all. Because at this, at this present moment, we need to stay positive in the midst of hardship. We're going through some hardships right now. We're going through some hard things we've never encountered. But we need to stay positive in the midst of all of this. We need to keep God in the forefront of our minds. We need to keep God in, in, in every aspect of our life. In Him we live, we move, we have our being in God. He needs to be the focus. He needs to be the center of everything. Your joy, your peace, everything. Let's look into Romans chapter 15 verse 13. It says, now may the God of hope Fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Fill you. May God fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound. You're going to go through this. You, you, you're going to come out of this. You're going to walk through this. You may abound. You're going to continue to prosper. You should not want any good thing. God said he's going to supply all of your needs, not some, all. 
all. Abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The knower. The Holy Spirit. Come on now. Come on now. Now let's look. I'm going to switch up to Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, said the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God don't intend for us to be harmed through this process, through this season. He doesn't intend for us to be harmed, our families, our children. He wants to prosper us. He wants to give us hope. <laughs> give us a hope and a future. Come on now, we're talking about our God. Our God. Our God. So we got to grab hold of his word. We, we, got, we got to be assured of this word. We got to be thoroughly convinced of this word. We can't allow the factors that are going on in our life, the things that are happening, to take the word literally out of our hearts. To take the word literally out of our minds. We can't allow these things, these events, to do that. But we got to grab hold of God's word and not let it go. We got to be thoroughly convinced of what he said in his word. What he is saying to us right now. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Let me go to that right quick. Romans chapter 5, verse 5 reads, now hope does not disappoint. Oh, I love that scripture, y'all. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Hope does not disappoint. Hope goes out, accomplishes the mission, and it doesn't disappoint. All right now, are you hoping in some things right now? Are you hoping things will change right now? Are you hoping that God is going to answer prayer right now? He said, hope does not disappoint. All right, get that now. Y'all need to be memorizing that scripture right there. Really meditate on that scripture. Does not. Hope. We saying hope for the best. Hope don't disappoint now. We hoping for the best. You may be looking at a worst case scenario right now, but we hoping for the best. We are not anticipating the worst. We are hoping for the best. All right? All right now, y'all. I think I'm going to read this last scripture, and I'm going to tie it, tie it up here. Romans chapter 8, verses 24 and 25. For we were saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? It wouldn't be hope. But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Hoping for what we do not see. We're going to patiently wait for hope. Hope and faith tying along with each other. We're going to eagerly wait for it with perseverance. We're going to press through it. And right now, this is our time to persevere. This is our time. This is your moment, your season, right now to persevere. To eagerly wait for this hope, this blessed hope that we are thoroughly convinced of because hope doesn't disappoint. Hope Trusting in God's word. Hoping for the best. Hoping for God to turn this thing around. Come on now, you all. Be encouraged. We are hoping for the best. And we are not anticipating the worst. We see the rainbow. We see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see God's glory being revealed. We see victory at the end of this battle. 
at the end of this war. So we got to continue to hope. We got to continue to hope for the best. All right, you all. God bless you. I love you all. You all be encouraged. Hold on to this word. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Romans chapter 8, verses 24 and 25. Hold on to God's word. God's word is really, we really need needing to pull God's word out more and more. Each and every day we need his word to empower us, to encourage us, to give us hope where there is no hope. So you all be encouraged and you all have a blessed rest of the day. I will see you on another Wild Wednesday. All right, you all. Bye-bye now.